Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting game from round 4 of the 2018 Candidates Tournament uh, here between Alexander Grishchuk and Ding Liren. And uh, so far uh, the first 4 rounds have been extremely exciting, a lot of interesting games and uh, the amount of interesting games is actually beyond my expectations. As uh, these are the candidates I, I thought the games would be a lot more boring and uh, props go to uh, definitely to Ding Liren as... Uh, uh, he's now, uh, after four rounds, he's only at 50%, uh, but he did have uh, three games with the black pieces so far and only one game with white, so having 50% in a field like this, uh, it's uh, quite an amazing result and he's never afraid to go into any crazy variation. Uh, this game here, uh, if I didn't tell you it was uh, played by Grishuk and Ding Liren in the candidates, you'd think it was uh, after the first 20 moves maybe a bullet game or, <laughs> or a blitz game. Uh, but uh, it, it's quite interesting and you'll see what I mean by this and it's uh, one of the rare cases uh, on the highest level uh, where you'll see a case of, uh, of double chess blindness. So let's see the game. Grishchuk has the white pieces and he opens with d4. We have knight to f6, c4, e6 and knight to f3, the antonyms of Indian, uh, knight to, uh, sorry d5, uh, we uh, transpose into the queen's gambit declined uh, and now knight to c3. Uh, we have c6, the semi-slav, uh, and the bishop to g5. Uh, h6, bishop to h4, and now d captures on c4. Uh, Grishu goes for e4. Uh, we have g5, attacking the bishop, bishop to g3, and now b5. Uh, here, bishop to e2 by Grishuk. Uh, and here, Ding Liren plays bishop to v7. Uh, idea like b4 is also possible dislodging this knight to win d4 pawn but after knight a4 and knight captures on e4 white will get a lot of development after this bishop to g bishop to e5 move uh, knight has to go back and now white has a wide variety of options he can either win the pawn back immediately he can uh, choose to develop rook c1 he can castle he can even decide to go crazy and push h4 so a lot of options here and uh, ding liren uh, obviously isn't interested in, in playing something like this. So after bishop to e2, bishop to b7, and here Grishchuk castles. Uh, knight b to d7, and now comes knight to e5. Uh, we have bishop to g7, and here uh, Ding Liren is basically uh, basically forcing uh, Grishchuk uh, to do his next move, as I don't think this next move by Grishchuk came as a su surprise to him. Uh, here uh, Grishchuk plays knight captures on f7. Uh, what a very a simple but strong idea. Uh, king captures on f7 and now e5, uh, dislodging this knight from f6 and creating uh, a wonderful outpost for the knight first on e4 and then on d6. So knight to d5, we have knight to e4, uh, queen to b6 and now knight to d6 check. Uh, king moves and now a4 immediately uh, trying to bust open the queen side to be able to attack uh, the lone king on e7 as uh, Grishuk basically sacrificed one knight to create, uh, to, to evolve this uh, knight into a monster knight on d6, as you can see uh, how many important squares this, uh, this knight is covering, it's like, it, it, it's a complete monster. So a4, uh, we have rook a to f8, and now bishop to f3. Uh, Grishuk wants to get rid of uh, Liren's uh, powerful knight on d5 as well. So a6, uh, we have bishop captures on d5, c captures on d5, and a captures on b5. Uh, a captures on b5, and now king to h1. Uh, Grishuk wants to execute f4, but uh, he doesn't want his king to be on, the, on this queen's diagonal, as it could bring him some problems. So, uh, bishop to c6, black doesn't really have a useful move here, uh, and now Grishuk uh, executes his f4 move. And this is definitely the critical moment of the game. This is only move 21, but this is uh, where the game uh, is being decided. Uh, here, you don't want to do anything with this pawn. You want to push h5, uh, start your own attack on the white king, uh, or you want to improve the position of your own king, bring him uh, to some safety. Uh, but here, uh, Ding Liren played g captures on f4, and this move uh, loses the game on the spot. Uh, now, Grishuk, uh, both Grishuk and Ding Liren didn't see this, so uh, if, if by any chance you haven't seen this game, uh, pause the video and try to find the winning uh, continuation for Grishuk. I will give it a couple of seconds as usual, uh, so for those of you who were able to find it, congratulations, uh, both uh, Grishuk and Ding Liren weren't able to find it, uh, and if you just want to enjoy the show, uh, the move uh, Grishuk missed here is bishop to h4 check. 
uh, why why is this so so powerful? As you as you can see, uh, the bishop is covering all of the dark squares around the king. The knight is covering the light squares, so the king doesn't have anywhere to go. Now you have to block this. Obviously, you want to block it with the bishop or the knight. You don't want to block it with the rook. Uh, now, if you block it with the bishop, uh, then comes queen to g4. And again, uh, what do you do here? Uh, if you you can't capture the bishop. If you capture it, uh, then you get queen to g7. Uh, but uh, you can play rook to g8, attacking the queen. But now comes e captures on f6 with check. Uh, king captures knight on d6, but now queen captures on f4 with check. And again, the king has nowhere to go. All of the dark squares are covered and the light, light squares are occupied by pieces and pawns. So here, black would have to push e5, but now simply d captures on e5 with check. Uh, king moves and now uh, e6 uh, comes uh, with the attack on the knight. Uh, king to b7 as the king was in check and now even f7. Now both the rook on g8 is attacked, the knight on d7 is attacked uh, and after black does any move, uh, every move loses for black here, let's say uh, d4 trying to create some chances uh, attacking the g2 pawn. Uh, here simply f captures on g8 uh, bringing a queen into the game, rook captures and now uh, bishop to g3 and black is lost. Uh, you either lose this knight or you move the knight, queen to f7 check, picks up the rook, it's all over for black. Uh, on the other hand, uh, after this g captures an f4 move and bishop to h4 check, uh, you could also block with the knight, but this isn't uh, this isn't really better. Uh, your idea is, of course, uh, pawn captures and then king captures knight. Uh, but again, queen to g4, the knight is pinned. Uh, and here, what do you do? The bishop on g7 is now attacked, you have to defend it. Rook to g8, uh, but now comes queen captures on f4. And again, you're really without a move here. Your your king, your knight is pinned. You have to move the king, and after king to d7, e captures on f6. Uh, you capture, and here you can simply sorry capture with the bishop. Uh, rook attacks bishop, and uh, now you simply play queen to e5. Uh, you, all of your pieces are defended. You're winning this game. Uh, black black doesn't really have a choice here. He would have to capture rook captures rook captures rook captures rook captures. Uh, and after knight captures, now comes queen to e5 check. King has to move, and now rook to a7 wins the game. Uh, you either move the king, and then queen to h8 will be decisive, or you capture it, and then queen g7 uh, wins the queen after the king moves. So, uh, this was uh, the critical moment of the game, move 21. The game could have uh, been over uh, at this point, but Grishuk played rook captures on f4. Uh, obviously his home preparation didn't stretch this far into the game. Uh, here rook captures on f4, bishop captures on f4 and now the bishop, the bishop is no longer able to deliver check. Uh, king to d8, Dingleran immediately uh, transfers, transfers his king to safety. Uh, we have king to g, uh, queen to g4 and now rook to f8. Uh, we have bishop to d2, getting the rook out of the way. Of course you don't want to allow queen captures and rook captures on f4. Uh, so getting the bishop to safety and now king to c7. And here white again has a, a wide variety of options. A king to c7 was actually the strongest move for black. And it's amazing uh, how Ding Liren uh, finds it. Uh, because you have to be careful of this bishop to a5 idea losing the queen. Uh, of course at the moment this is impossible. If bishop to a5 queen simply captures it. And after rook captures rook to f1 this is checkmate. Uh, another thing to consider is what about queen captures on g7. You could do this, but after queen captures, then queen captures on d4, attacking the bishop, attacking the b2 pawn. So uh, bishop to a5 check, king moves, and now what do you do here? Your b2 pawn is attacked, uh, black is threatening to infiltrate uh, the second rank with the rook. So after you bring the queen back to the defense, uh, now simply queen captures on b2, attacking the rook, uh, queen to e1 defending, and now queen captures on e5. Uh, you literally destroyed all of, <laughs> all of white's pawns and you're winning this game easily. So uh, after this king to c7 move, uh, Grishuk plays h3 now. Now there's no more rook to f1 checkmating ideas and now bishop to a5 definitely is a threat. Uh, so now Dingleran stops at b4. Uh, we have queen captures on g7, now this is possible, uh, but now queen captures on d4, again attacking the bishop on d2. Uh, bishop captures on b4 and now queen capture some b2 again attacking the bishop and also the rook on a1 uh, here bishop to a5 check you do have to move the bishop with a tempo king moves to b8 and now rook to g1 
Rook to g1 is the best move as you don't want to put it to a, put the rook on a silly square to allow the queen to remaneuver herself using the attacks on, on the rook. So rook to g1 and now c3. And what do you do here? Uh, here, again, you have to be very careful. It's a very delicate position. Uh, you can't afford to, to grab a pawn with the queen. For example, queen captures on h6, uh, then c2 comes and uh, this brings a lot of trouble to white. Uh, d5 pawn is attacked and you have to do something. Uh, queen g5 and now comes d4. This d pawn is also starting to roll down the board and now you've opened up the attack from the bishop to the g2 pawn. Uh, a very nice position for black, most likely winning. Uh, so after this c3 move, Grishuk decided to play queen to e7 and uh, grab the h pawn uh, in a different way. Here, Ding Liren played c2, threatening c1, uh, promoting to a queen, and now bishop to d2, defending c1 and also attacking the h6 pawn. Uh, queen, to e queen captures on e5 was played, and now bishop captures on h6. Uh, rook to g8, uh, getting the rook out of the attack. Uh, now comes knight to f7, attacking the queen, and uh, here again a very interesting position, a lot of things are possible. Uh, you can see that the rook is eyeing the g2 pawn, the bishop could also be eyeing the g2 pawn, uh, but ideas like d4 uh, unfortunately aren't possible with the idea of sacrificing the queen and then capturing, because after you capture, uh, this doesn't really achieve anything with the idea that if rook captures you promote to a queen, because now knight, c, knight, knight captures on c6 is delivered with check, uh, but uh, on the other side queen to, queen to d6 also leads to checkmate for white. Uh, so after knight to f7, uh, we have queen to c3, getting the queen out of the attack. Uh, we have uh, queen to d6 check, uh, king to b7, and now queen captures on e6. And here Ding Liren plays d4. Uh, this uh, starts uh, this d pawn's journey and also now opens up uh, a very important attack on the g2 pawn. And while this is, uh, this is a very strong move, uh, even stronger would be rook to a8 as uh, Grishuk will very skillfully use this undefended rook uh, on g8 to remaneuver his pieces. Uh, but okay, d4. <clears throat> uh, now we have knight to d6 check. Uh, king moves and now uh, knight to e4 attacking the queen on c3 and also now the queen is attacking the rook on g8. Uh, and here Ding Liren counters with knight to c5, offering the exchange of knights but also attacking Grishuk's queen on e6. So what do you do here? You can't really afford to exchange queens. If knight captures, knight captures, this endgame is completely lost for white. So after knight c5, uh, queen captures on g8. The best move for Grishu, grabbing the rook. <clears throat> and now comes knight captures on e4. So after all of this, uh, both sides have two pawns, and now Grishuk is actually up the exchange. But it doesn't really matter much. The, those uh, past pawns of Ding Lirans uh, are so far down the board, and uh, there are all sorts of tricks here involved. Uh, Grishuk has to be very careful, uh, as if this knight, for example, ever moves from e4, queen captures on h6, on, on h3 would be checkmate as the g2 pawn is pinned. Uh, so king h2 immediately by Ding Liren, not allowing any, any such tricks to even exist. Uh, d3, uh, sorry, by Grishuk, now d3 by Ding Liren, and now bishop to e3 would check. King to b5 and queen to b8 again with check and now it's a question can Ding Liren escape checks and uh, <laughs> uh, grab a full point in this game or will Grishuk be able to, to continue checking him. So king to c4, now queen to c7, uh, threatening to capture the bishop on c6, uh, queen to f6 defending the bishop and now rook to f1. Uh, a, a final a final try by uh, Alexander Grishchuk to win this game. Now if you grab the rook after a queen captures, now queen captures the bishop with check and the bishop and the queen are creating a wall. The black king cannot defend the knight uh, on e4. Uh, so after king moves, queen captures and now this is... Uh, hard to say if it's winning, but probably it is. Yeah, it's probably winning for white as there, there is no way... To, to promote any of these pawns, uh, you don't really gain anything by by winning the bishop as white has two pawns and you will be left with only one pawn. Uh, so after this rook to f1, uh, queen to d6, uh, now Ding Liren forces a trade of queens, uh, queen captures, knight captures and rook to f uh, rook to f6, uh, attacking both the knight, the knight can't move because the bishop is hanging, uh, king to d5 and now the only move that uh, actually saves the, the game for Grishuk. Uh, is rook captures on d6. You have to give back the exchange because if uh, if Ding Liren's pieces become active, uh, those passed pawns are simply too strong. 
So king captures, now it's an opposite colored bishop endgame, and it's a completely drawn, drawn position. Uh, a couple of more moves were played, g3, king d5, uh, king f2, king to c4, uh, bishop to d2, now king to b3, and now king to e3, Grishuk offers his g2 pawn. Uh, unfortunately for Grishuk, you can't afford to, pu to start pushing any of the pawns, but uh, even if you could, I mean, it wouldn't matter. Uh, because of king b2, if you allow this king to occupy the b2 square covering c1, then black is winning. So, after king b3, uh, king to e3, and now comes bishop captures on g2. And after this, uh, bishop captures on g2, uh, the, uh, a draw was agreed upon. Uh, but it, it, does, it doesn't matter, even if you play something like king b2, king captures on d3. It's uh, fairly simple, you can't make any progress here. Bishop captures, h4, bishop f3. Uh, the black pawn can never promote, and the white pawn can never cross a light square. So yeah, after bishop captures on g2, uh, they agreed to a draw, but, I mean, what a game. And it's uh, very exciting, I mean, this uh, uh, this here moment uh, that we said after g captures on f4, so move 21, the game could have ended on move 21 if bishop if uh, Grishuk found bishop to h4 check. But yeah, he didn't, uh, a case of double blindness in top level chess, uh, not a very often... Uh, thing to see but it happens i do hope you enjoyed it and uh for for the end of this video a couple of photos as we do have some photos from the candidates uh here we have uh this is uh, around the opening from the game uh, you can see that grishuk is re ready to battle dingler and also uh, very interested in the game uh here we have another move uh, another photo where uh, Ding Liren makes a move and uh, here we even have a nice photo from the interview uh, after the game uh, prob probably the moment where Grishuk realizes what he did uh, by missing that bishop to h4 move uh, Karlovich shows it to him and uh, <laughs> you can see by Ding Liren's face that uh, you know he he's very satisfied with himself but yeah he, d he dodged a bullet there but uh, after that I mean it was a case of double blindness he played an excellent game and really calculated everything so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, once again, I would like to thank Nikki Riga for her photos uh, from the candidates. Uh, all of her links to her social media pages are in the description below, so feel free to follow her. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, depending on if there will be any interesting games in the candidates, or if not, uh, I will continue my Talbotvinik series. Thank you all, and I will see you soon.